Good morning. Happy Thanksgiving. Welcome to St. Teresa of Calcutta Parish. Before Mass begins, will you please join me in saying the prayer for the Parish Mortgage Contribution Program. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Gracious and loving God, we know that it is by your hand that our parish has been guided to create a faithful and supportive community. As we welcome all members to help build up your kingdom within our parish, we ask that you guide us to be the faithful stewards of the gifts you have entrusted to us by generously giving to the continued growth of our parish community. In doing so, we model the words of Mother Teresa, who reminds us to reach out to others. In love and compassion, giving where it is most needed, and share the joy of loving with everyone. We ask this through Christ our Lord, amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Celebrating with us on this Thanksgiving day is Father Pigeon, assisted by Deacon Peter and Deacon Tom. Let us gather together singing 197, Come Ye Thankful People Come, number 197. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the second reading, St. Paul will say to the community, uh, I give thanks to God for you. And uh, I'm, I know that Father Brandt, uh, along with Father G, as the kids in high school call him, but I want to show you he's over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're Deacon Tom. Yes, I am. Can't fool me. Father G, but I'm, I want to show off Father Giardini, I can actually say his name, uh, and I too, that we give thanks to God for, for you on this Thanksgiving day. Sisters and brothers, let's acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, your word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May mighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Father, all powerful, your gifts of love are countless, and your goodness infinite. As we come before you on Thanksgiving Day, with gratitude for your kindness, open our hearts to have concern for every man, woman, and child, so we may share your gifts in loving service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. And now, bless the God of all. 
who has done wondrous things on earth, who fosters people's growth from their mother's womb and fashions them according to his will. May he grant you joy of heart and may peace abide among you. May his goodness toward us endure in Israel to deliver us in our days. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge. As the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you await for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful 
and by him you were called to fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, ten lepers met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go show yourself to the priests. As they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing he had been healed, returned, glorifying God in a loud voice. And he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. Some time ago, my spiritual director gave me the prayer assignment of taking 10 minutes each day uh, to, to give thanks to God. But he put a condition on it. And that was that not what I should be thankful for, but rather what I feel thankful for. And so I did that, and uh, most days it came really easy. And of course, by doing what I feel thankful for, it always led me to the shoulds, but in a different way, in a heartfelt way. But one day, one day, I must have been having a really bad day. Um, I was in the chapel after lunch, I always did it after lunch, um, sitting in the Adoration Chapel at Epiphany Church in South Philly. And I couldn't think of one thing I felt thankful for. I was in a rare, bad, bad mood. So I couldn't come up with anything. So I thought, I felt, you know, I felt a little, a little squeamish about it, but I thought, okay, I'm gonna listen to my spiritual director. I said, God, I just have nothing I feel thankful for. So I just sat there and, oh, you know, it's just okay. I guess that's the way it's gonna go. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it occurred to me, it welled up in me, oh, you like the soup at lunch. I don't, I'm not even a soup guy, but I really enjoyed the soup at lunch. So I could say to God, God, thank you for the soup. And then with that, the floodgates opened, and I named a lot of things that I felt thankful for that day. And what that did was it changed my mood. I went from being miserable to being joyful because of starting with what do I feel thankful for rather than what should I be thankful for. Uh, a priest, a priest was visiting a, in the hospital, a man with, a young man with terminal illness. He was about 29 years old and uh, he was visiting him and, 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 and the young man communicated to him uh, that uh, he was a man of faith. He used to go to church every Sunday. Uh, he was he prayed. In fact, he told the priest, he said, you know, Father, I'm praying every day. I pray every day, I pray often every day, but he said, I feel totally and completely empty, empty. I, I just feel abandoned by, by God. 
And, and the priest said, okay, so tell me, uh, uh, what, what, how do you pray? He said, well, I give thanks to God. I give thanks to God every day, you know? And the priest said, okay, well, tell me about your feelings. He said, well, I feel angry. I feel hurt. Um, you know, uh, I feel guilty. And, 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 and the priest said to him, look, try this. Stop giving thanks to God for now and tell him how you really feel. And so the young man did it. The priest, when the priest came back, uh, the young man said, thanks, Father. I'm feeling, I am feeling much more God's presence in me. And I actually also feel thankful. You know, I wonder why the nine didn't come back to give thanks. You know, the, uh, some people would say it's laziness. But by the way, we have no idea why they didn't come back, you know. It could have been laziness, could have been, you know, that they were ingrates. Uh, I, I, I don't think so, you know. Uh, I, I think there's always something behind it. And I would suggest to you that just maybe the nine didn't come back because maybe they felt uh, angry that they, all those years, they might have felt like, Lord, what took you so long to heal me? You know, they might have felt like, uh, you know, overwhelmed with the fact now that they had to get back to their, to their old lives. As happy as they would be, they would also be scared and overwhelmed. And, and so I wonder if that wasn't the reason that stopped them. And wouldn't it have been a shame if they had brought that to the Lord and allowed him to move them from that to thankfulness. But we do know that one came back, and he was a Samaritan. He came back, uh, and, and he gave heartfelt thanks to, to Jesus. We gather today, not because it's a church day, uh, uh, but it's a secular day where our country takes a day uh, to give thanks. And uh, we Catholics have the country beat because we just don't take one day a year to give thanks. Every time we gather for the Eucharist, especially on Sunday, uh, we gather to give thanks. So, you know, that's what the word Eucharist means. It's the Greek word. Uh, you'll hear me say in the Eucharistic prayer, he took bread and gave thanks. He gave thanks. And so Jesus asked us to give thanks to the Father, and he himself did that. He, we hear that in the Gospels where he would just spontaneously give thanks. And you can tell when he go, gives those spontaneous moments of thanks, it's heartfelt. It's a heartfelt thanks. It's not, I should be thankful. It's, this, uh, my, this is my heart uh, uh, speaking. My heart speaking. And so today we gather again for the Eucharist. And the Eucharist is, you know, we can give thanks to God at home. But gathering for the Eucharist gives us a more intimate connection to Jesus because it's Jesus who gives thanks to the Father through with and in us as we gather for this Eucharist for, for, for this Eucharist and if we can grow in our thankfulness to heartfelt thankfulness rather than just should thankfulness if we can grow to that heartfelt thankfulness um, then he is going to say to us what he said to the man your faith has saved you Father, graced by you, we have thankful hearts, and we bring now our needs to you through Jesus and in the Spirit. For the church and her mission to preach the gospel throughout the whole world, may the Holy Spirit continue to bless and sanctify her. Sanctify her. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders in our communities and throughout our country, May God's wisdom shape the decisions they make for our greater good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from anxiety or depression, may God give them courage and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community and our journey as disciples, may God strengthen us in our baptismal call to share the gospel with others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, May God shine his face upon them and grant them eternal peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, for all the people in the world who are struggling today, uh, in countries that are war-torn, or there's hunger, poverty, 
in our own country as well. And so Lord, we just really ask that you, that you help them to see that in the midst of their darkness, there is the light of your son, Jesus, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, deepen our heartfelt sense of your immense love for each of us so we can confidently bring our needs to your Father through Jesus and in the Holy Spirit. And we say, Amen. Let's do it again. We say, Amen. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, number 615, Give Thanks to the Lord, number 615. Pray, my sisters and, and my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of the hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and good of all his holy church. God our Father, from whose hand we have received generous gifts, so that we might learn to share your blessings in gratitude, accept these gifts of bread and wine, and let the perfect sacrifice of Jesus draw us closer to all our brothers and sisters in the human family, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. You have entrusted to us the gift, the great gift of freedom, a, a gift that calls forth responsibility and commitment to the truth that I all have a fundamental dignity before you. In Jesus, through his death and resurrection, we find our ultimate redemption, freedom from sin and every blessing. So, with hearts full of love, join the angels today and every day of our lives to sing your glory as we acclaim.
You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who loves us more than we can imagine, who always walks with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when at once for disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and he breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope and Nelson our Bishop, with all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection Give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Teresa of Calcutta, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not in temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look down on our sins from the faith of your church, graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those that are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 363, Bread of Angels, number 363.
Let us pray. In the celebration, O oh Lord our God, you have shown us the depths of your love for all your children. Help us, we pray, to reach out in love to all your people so we may share with them the good things of time and eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Let us go forth together singing number 729 at the name of Jesus, number 729. Thank you. 